when you play this game right now, you can move the paddle, but you can't do anything else. You can't move. You can't uh, shoot the ball. The ball just bounces and falls and um, doesn't really do exactly what we want it to do. So we need to make a new script that's going to control the behavior of the ball. The first step of that is we need to attach the ball to the paddle so that it sticks on there until we want to shoot it off. And then whenever we want to be able to shoot the ball out whenever we click the mouse button. So let's go down to scripts and create a new script. We'll call it ball, being very descriptive of what we want on our script. And I'm going to just drag that because my computer can think, onto the ball prefab, double checking that it is connected, and it is. Um, and I'll just double check up here, make sure that it, yep, because I applied it to the prefab, we're all good there. Double click on it to open Visual Studio. And now we have our fresh script, um, we have to do a couple of new things that you have not had to do yet in our games. Um, so for our ball to connect to the paddle, we need to be able to get a reference to that, that particular object. So at the very top, um, I'm going to serialize a field which you should be pretty familiar with now. That's a pretty standard starting point. Um, this is going to be a game object. We are connecting our ball to our paddle. Um, so we're going to say paddle, which is a, a class that we, we know we have. And let's call it, it's got some suggestion names here, but I want to be, um, I think I'll just call it, let's call it, yeah, let's just call it paddle. That's good enough for me. It's not a complex name, but it will work. So if I were to save this and go back into Unity and click on ball, and look at my script, let it initialize. Now I have this field right here called none and then parentheses paddle. So if I were to click on this selector, it brings up the paddle prefab, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. You'll notice everything is bold right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that back to the prefab so it knows that, um, actually, let's do it on the, let's do it on the, the prefab ball. So I'm gonna drag the paddle prefab into the ball prefab so that everything is connected like so. Uh, so what I basically just did was I took this game object and I linked it to my ball game object. And I'm going to also take my ball in my scene and I'm going to move it down to where I want it. So in Black Breaker games, the ball usually kind of sits right on top of the paddle. I zoomed in a little bit much there. That's a little bit close. We don't want it to get stuck on the paddle. Maybe just hovering just a tiny bit above the paddle. Not a ton of space, but it definitely looks like it is sitting on top of it. And it is centered because both of these are centered on that middle line for starting out. So I know that that's where it should be. Hop back over into Visual Studio. And we need to create a, another variable. And this variable is going to be of type vector2, but we don't need to serialize it. So um, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space under that serialize field because I like to keep my stuff grouped by type. And we're going to call this paddle and then use our camel case to say the first letter is lowercase and the other, all the other words in the sentence are uppercase. So that's what that's called, camel case. Uh, and it's a vector two, which remember last time we covered was uh, basically the representation of 2D vectors and points, also known as like where to 
two points or where points exist in in the game and we're calling this one the paddle to ball distance we are going to use this to set what the distance is between the paddle and the ball at any given time so that way it is it will be effectively stuck to our paddle so um first let's use that that we just made so we'll call paddle to ball distance we're going to set that equal to transform dot position, meaning the position that the uh, the the we were their transform component is currently at, and then minus the paddle dot transform dot position. So we're saying uh, our current position minus whatever the position of the paddle is. That's our distance between these two things. Um, it's a fancy way of saying basically like whatever it currently is, keep it at that. And that's at the start of the game. And it will just start staying like that. Um, next, what we need to do is make it so that whenever we move our paddle, our ball will update its position to stay with the paddle. So again, we're going to be using that vector 2. You're going to use vector 2 quite a lot in this. And we're going to call paddle pause because we need the paddle position. And we're making a new vector 2. So anytime you are declaring a vector 2, you always generally follow it up with new vector 2 and then parentheses that contain what that what that information is. So we are taking our paddle dot transform dot position dot x for our x value and then our paddle dot transform dot position dot y so what we're doing is we are looking for whatever the paddle's position is every frame and then we're going to take nope that's not it transform sometimes that uh autofill can get you in trouble can't it Transform dot position, meaning our position of our ball, because we're not declaring it's the paddles transform, we're declaring just looking for the transform's position, our ball's current position. We're going to, in the update method, after we've looked for the paddle, every frame, we are going to take the paddle position and we're going to use that to change the position of the paddle and ball distance as as like as it moves. So let's save all that. See how that looks. So now when I move this, it rolls with me. Now you might notice if I move very quickly, you can kind of see it. The ball is it will shimmy just a little bit. And I'm okay with that. I think it kind of makes it a little bit more dynamic looking and gives it some more uh, flex, but if you want to figure out how you're going to make it attach and not roll around, then that is a challenge for you to complete. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but I'm sure you can, if you do enough Googling, you can probably figure it out. You can see I made it roll because it flipped off the edge a little bit. Um, but now, whenever I click, it doesn't do anything. So the next step is making it so that whenever I click, I want to shoot the ball off of the paddle. So... Let's go back into Visual Studio and our ball script because everything to do with the ball is going to be controlled from the ball script. And we have to change a few things here. So we're going to deal with some uh, some new stuff that we'll talk about kind of as we go. But we're going to be dealing with Boolean phrases, which are basically a type of variable that can either be true or false. And we're going to use our bool to set whether or not the game has started. Uh, and whenever it's uh, false, meaning the game has not started yet, the ball will stay stuck to the paddle. And at the point that we click, the game will start, effectively meaning the ball will shoot off and we'll be able to do things. So um, let's go ahead and start with that bool. That one seems like a good starting point. So. Uh, declaring a variable, just like always. So we start with bool. We don't need to serialize this field. 
Um, and we're going to call it has started. Some, something funny about Boolean phrases is that usually they are kind of like a question. Uh, so you phrase them as like um, has fired, um, has, uh, has, has died something like that, true or false, um, because the answer is a true or false. So it's it's like a question, like, has this happened? Yes or no? Um, so bull has started. So mean has, uh, bull is asking, has the game started yet? And we need to check for that. Um, we don't need to check for it at start because we know obviously it hasn't started yet there, but we will start checking for it in our update method. So we want to say, if, it's an if statement, you are a little bit familiar with those. And we're gonna learn another little new thing here that's very handy, um, is whenever you are making a question about something. So you could say, if um, has started is equal, equal sign, like two equal signs, false, or to be even shorter and more concise, you can use an exclamation point bef before the Boolean phrase. An exclamation point means not. So basically, has started, has not started is what, whenever you add an exclamation, exclamation point between it, it just means it hasn't happened yet. If this has not occurred. Um, so that's the easiest way to do that. And then um, we need to, the update method is getting a little bit cluttered. So let's, take this and we're going to refactor it. So I'm not positive if we've done this yet, but I'm going to select everything and I'm going to right click and I'm going to quick fix extract method. Uh, and then you have an, on, on your Windows computer, you will have an extra click you have to do that you, you click again and it, and it extracts the method. Um, and it just gives it this name new method and it, whenever I change the name, it will change the name of both of them. So let's call this ball stuck to paddle. Um, so when the game hasn't started, we want to make sure, I want to make sure I put that in the if statement. Um, we want to make sure that this is running. So the game hasn't started. We want to make sure that the ball is stuck to the paddle. And now we have a whole method that we can control everything that is not hap is happening whenever it's not started and the ball is stuck to the paddle. Um, and then let's go ahead and create another one, another method in here. Launch ball on click. So this is giving me a red line because it doesn't exist in the current context. So another quick way we can do this is I can right click on it, quick fix and generate method. And it will take that and go ahead and make it. And it puts in like this little throwaway text in here, which I'm going to delete like so. So perfect. Uh, now we have a, basically our game is going to constantly check if the game has not started. If the game has not started, it's going to stick the ball to the paddle and it's going to run this method called launch ball and click until we actually launch the ball when we click. So much like with your other games, the, we're going to use an if statement that says, if you push a button, then do this stuff. Um, so you should, be pretty familiar with this, but since we're not using a keyboard, we need a different, we're not using get key down, we're using a um, different version. We're gonna use if um, get mouse button down, which remember you can always look up those key codes in the Unity manual. So if statement input dot get mouse button, and we want it down, so when it clicks, and the button we're looking for in our parentheses is zero. Um, zero is the leftmost mouse button, so that's the one we want, just a regular click. Um, with the regular click, we are going to take our Boolean phrase that uh, has started, and we are going to set it to true, because now that the game has started, we want to make it so that our ball is no longer stuck to the paddle. So we have to set our Boolean phrase to true. And then 
another new topic we're going to cover is called getting the components. Um, so basically, on your Unity, let's look at this. On your Unity, your ball right here has all of these different little sections. Each one is a component. So if I want to get any of these, I need to use some script to find it and then tell it what to do with said script. So if I wanted to get the transform position and tell it to move, I would be looking for, I would use this piece of code I'm about to show you and then, you know, get the transform and then set it to whatever I want it to. Um, in this case, we are going to be getting access to our rigid body 2D. So in Visual Studio, um, I'm going to type get component, which it obviously wants to autofill for me. Uh, and then you use these angle brackets. And inside there, it's looking for the type of thing we're looking for. So we want our rigid body 2D because we know that that's what's attached to the ball. You use these open and close curly brackets, or not curly brackets, um, open and close parentheses, dot. And now we're going to do some velocity. We want to, whenever we click, give our ball some velocity. And we want to set a new vector two because anytime you're dealing with movement, you're going to be using vector twos, uh, in, at least for now. You might be using vector threes later, but for now, a new vector two. We're setting a new vector two. And let's just set our numbers. Let's say we want our new vector two to be, let's see, 2x. And so that's a two and an F, um, it's a float variable, so I can change it. And let's say, uh, I don't know, 10Y. That's the, the speed I want it to go at. And I want to save that. Let's see what we've got going on over in Unity. It's been a while since we've checked on our code. Oh, yep, there we go. So you can see, our ball is moving. It does kind of bounce a little bit sadly um, there at the end. So as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of Y velocity. It's kind of slow, right? It just bop, 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 bop. It's, it's, I, I definitely think we need some more Y value. So a better way to adjust this. Right now, we have what's um, in coding communities generally referred to as a magic number. It is a number that is hard coded and cannot be changed in our code. And generally speaking, you want to change from magic numbers to variables that can be altered easily. So let's come up here. And we're going to do this as a serialized field because whenever you serialize a field, you can change it like while the game's running to do a little bit of play testing, and that's excellent. So let's do that. Um, we're going to call this, um, it's a float because you know we need numbers that need to be able to change dynamically. And let's call it um, x velocity to be very descriptive. And, oh, nope, don't want to space there. And then we need a, our y velocity as well, right? So let's, um, let's go ahead and initialize these numbers, meaning go ahead and start them with a value. Our x, I felt okay with 2f. Let's let's try it with 5 just for now, just to see what it looks like. Um, and let's give it some y velocity. It definitely was too slow. So I don't want to go too crazy. Let's say, let's add 15, 15f. Now we're going to replace these. So x is always first. It always goes x and then y and then z. So, you know, much like the alphabet. So I'm going to replace that with x velocity. Now those two are linked up. And this one with y velocity. And those two are linked up. And I saved it. And we'll go into Unity. <sighs> And we're rolling around. Oh, yeah, that feels a little bit better. Oh, and it just flew off the edge of my screen because my barriers aren't acting the way they need to. So we'll have to fix that. Bonk, it flew off into the distance. But I like how much faster it moves. But the convenient thing about that serialized field is, let's say we want to set our x velocity to, I don't know, 10. 
and our y velocity to um, let's say 30. Let's see how crazy that is. Hit play. Oops, clicked off the wrong screen. Oh yeah, that's a that's way too fast. So um, that's all, kind of the whole point of playtesting it as you go is to see. Let's set this back at. Uh, let's set this back at two. And this one back. Let's set this at twenty. See how twenty feels. Twenty feels maybe a little bit sluggish. Maybe I want twenty-five. So I'm basically just tweaking my numbers based on what feels good um, to to my particular game and. That one kind of goes maybe a little bit fast because it looks like it's going over the ball. But for right now, I'm happy with that. So I will leave it at that. And I'm going to apply that back to the prefab so that the X and Y are um, set to what we want them set to. And I think that's all we're going to cover in this video. So now that we have our game set up in a way that we can shoot our ball, it bounces off of the obstacles, and we can move our paddle, and we can... Um, tell whether the game is running or not. Um, it's basically most of our core components. Now we need to be able to enter into the uh, goal area and go to another scene. So we're going to have to start making levels and figure out how that flow is going to go. Also, uh, as you noticed, my barriers were not working. So I want you to go ahead and double check your barriers, see if they're working. And if they're not, try to figure out why they're not working. So that's your challenge before you move on to the next video. Make sure everything's working the way it is supposed to before we move on.